Good morning. My first time out for three and a half weeks. Now, if you remember over there on the practice green, I did a what should senior golfers practice. Well, this is part two. Over there, you see, it was all a demonstration for the camera and for some bizarre reason, I got nervous. Let's come play 18 and we'll do it for real. Just see how good I am when I risk, miss a real green and I'm chipping onto or pitching onto a real green. Um, we've had a lot of rain. I haven't played. My short game's going to be ropey. So uh, we'll find out what it's like at its very worst. See you on the first green or perhaps around the first green. The reason I bang on about the short game is as we get older and we can no longer reach greens, it's going to become a bigger part of our game. We're going to be doing it a lot more often. The good thing about the short game is you don't have to be young or tall or fit or strong or fast. We can all do it even if we're in our 70s. And now you're retired, you've run out of excuses. You've got all the time in the world to practice your pitching, your chipping, and your putting. Talking of which, this little thing is for a birdie. <laughs> Perhaps I will record the full shots. Now I sliced off the third and obviously hit this tree here which has managed to keep the ball in play. So when we get to the green you'll know how many shots I've had and that's a top. And how, how badly I played in order to get there. On the downslope, got to get it up quick so I couldn't go for the green. And I've left myself 35. Now this is one really big fault I have. The practice swing is long enough. The real swing isn't. Lands on the soft green and stops absolutely dead. As you would expect. So this is one thing that we need to practice. And that's lagging. Lagging up for a tap in. Well, from a birdie to a double bogey, from one under to one over in the blink of an eye. Now, I don't know what strokes gained would say about that particular hole with so many bad shots in it. The way I look at it is it was the drive, and it was the drive because I'm a little out of sync. I've only played, I haven't played in three and a half weeks. Plus I'm making changes. So I was a little out of sync, never mind the seven iron feet together. All the other bad shots were caused by the bad drive. My provisional was down the middle and was 30, 32 yards closer to the green. And I would not have made a six from there. So it's the drive. Let's move on. Just wedged it onto number four, pretty close. But here's my luck. Just there is last week's hole. Thought I'd have been down for an eagle too. As it happens, I got a little downhiller left. Now these putts are very important and quite often on camera, I just walk up to them and hit them simply because I'm trying to get out of somebody's way, but there's nobody behind me today, thank goodness. So I can actually take the amount of time that I need over a scoring putt like this. Just, no, it just did a little wiggle instead of turning into the hole. Never mind, I will take a par. Now on, uh, what was this? This is five. I hit the stinky over a tee shot. 34 yards left. Now, I don't know if you follow Golf Sidekick, but he always says, get it on the green. I personally think 
get it on the green and give yourself an uphill putt. And I'll get told off for this drag back, no doubt. Up on to number six, chipping with a pitching wedge. Run it out to the hole and tap it in for another par. Right, so on that last one, the five wood didn't carry all the way up here, kind of like hit the bank and bounced down. I had a poor lie, but it was on an upslope. Now when you've gone on upslope, you've got this ramp built in for putting the ball in the air. So the last thing you need is a lofted club in your hand. That's why I switched to the pitching wedge. Kept the flight down, got it to roll out, had a tap in. What more can you ask for? I'm in a par on here and it's playing driver five wood today. Good grief. Seven and another long lag. These are the sort of things that we really do need to practice, is long lagging. And I got a little bit excitable about that. I've gone past leaving myself a downhiller. But another par. Short in two shots on nine, 56 yards. Now this green runs away from me and I was expecting it to roll out, but it just stuck, such as the amount of rain we've had. Get in! Another poor drive, so I couldn't go for the green. Left myself 72. This hasn't even landed on the green. I'm beginning to think there's something wrong with this ball. I'm rather confused. Now there's a two ball coming up behind, so instead of going for the pitching wedge, I've stuck with the sand wedge, just to hurry it along. Thank you. What a mess that was. Well, I'm hitting the ball, especially with the long clubs, exactly how I would expect when I've got this stiff and sore neck. I come down too steep, I don't hit it very far, and it goes right. That being said, my actual score is no real different to normal. I'll keep it a secret for the moment, mainly because I haven't added it up myself. And it's always best not to add up your score until you're in the clubhouse with a beer in your hand. Right, a short par four. So sometimes the short game is to uh, make you a birdie rather than save a bogey instead of a double bogey but the way I'm driving it the chances of me getting it up there today and with the course playing so long say the chances of getting up there I've gone dark what's up with this camera chances of getting it up there are virtually nil but we shall see a short pull off the 10th over the trees onto the green 62 yards another one of these sort of medium length pitches Eleven, another long lag up the step. and completely and utterly wrong. Yeah, you can tell I haven't played in three and a half weeks to be this far past. Right, I'm just down at the halfway house and I'm letting a group through uh, a two ball. They're moving pretty fast and uh, my knee will not allow me to walk very fast. It's not as good as I've thought. I think I might be back to the doctors and see if I can get a repeat prescription on the antibiotics. Strokes gained, or any other means of measuring your round of golf, I don't use it. What I do is I write it all here on the card. 
I don't know if that'll focus or not. So I write down the score, I write down the fairway, either yes, left or right, and I write down the green, either yes, left, right or short. And I look for a pattern. Of course, I've got this stiff, very stiff, very painful neck that always alters my turn and I generally hit the driver weakly and to the right and this pattern I'm seeing on here is exactly that. Uh, short game is going exactly how you would imagine a short game to go when you haven't been on a golf course for three and a half weeks. So from this particular card I'm not exactly learning a great deal. As I say I'd normally look for a pattern as opposed to rely on an electronic tool to tell me what I'm doing wrong. So this short game business, whether it's 60 yards or 16 yards, this is what we need to practice as seniors. Oh, four feet. Because we're going to have it more and more often. We're going to be coming up short. And as I say, no excuses. We've got plenty of time when we're retired. Oh my. Yeah, that's, that's rock hard. And I'm 28 yards past the flag. Such is life. That's why you're supposed to avoid bunkers, isn't it? So you don't get shots like that. And another double bogey for the card. I think that's that's the second one today. Down a 14 and a downhill putt. This is nasty. So just rolling in it down there for a tap in is absolutely ideal. Right, before we carry on, here I am on 15, the par 3, slightly downhill over the water. You remember I came up short on 12 and I came up short on 13. That 7 iron off 13 went 136 yards carry into the bunker. Well down here I've hit the Kirkland, I've been playing all the way around with a Kirkland and then I hit a Pro V1 after. There's a ball that's a good 20 feet or more short of the flag and there is a ball that's from here looks to be about a foot away from the flag. See if you can guess which one is which. Well there's the Pro V1, just getting the pitch mark. Missed the flag by a little over a foot and about a yard past. And eight yards short of the flag is the Kirkland. At least the lags get a, are getting a bit better as I go around. Sixteen and short again. Slight misread and a bounce to the right. These are putts that we have to nail. To hit it and I under hit it. Right, I'm on 17. I had 84 yards up the hill. Um, I hit my 50 degree. The Kirkland didn't even reach the green surface, so we're chipping. So if I, let's drop this old, tired 2018 Pro V1 I found in the bushes, and we're about pin high chosen the sand wedge again. This is the wrong club. So I'm trying to fly it to the flag and I just can't bring myself to hit it hard enough. I should really stick with the pitching wedge on those occasions. But we can always putt. Yes! So the short game. I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is. From 60 yards and in it's something that we really do have to get better at to keep our scores down or if you're playing well keep them down
just drop the bag off and get another one of those lucky shots that rolls up towards the flag and makes us look good. And a final bird. Right, it's time to wind up this video. What seniors should practice? Now, depending on your age, ability, and how far you drive it, and how firm the ground is, you could either be pitching and chipping left and right, or every time is short because you simply can't reach some of these long holes anymore. Now you can go on the uh, practice area over there and set up on the fringe uh, at 20 yards, at 30 yards. It'll even stretch out to about 40 yards to the farthest flag. And you can develop your muscle memory and then you've got to take it to the course. And when you get on the course, you have no idea what you're going to get. You're not going to get that exact yardage um, off a nice lie. You're going to get some bad lies and all sorts of stuff. And... Uh, so what I tried to demonstrate today is different distances and that just didn't happen because it's a real round of golf. You don't know what you're going to get in a real round of golf. And it's certainly noticeable, excuse me, that I've had three and a half weeks away from actually playing golf. Um, the card for those who like numbers. So as I say, I don't use um, shots, strokes gained, and I don't use any other electronic medium. What I do is I just write down on the card the score, yes, left, right, short, or short bunker, wh whatever it might be, and I look for a pattern. Now I've hit six out of 14 fairways, which isn't surprising. When I've got this stiff and painful neck, which I've had for well, since 1990, it alters my swing. I hit the ball poorly and it goes short and it usually goes right. So under normal circumstances, when I'm swinging well, I will do this and I will look to see if there's a pattern to where I'm missing with my driver. I then look for a pattern of where I miss the greens. Now I hit nine greens today but seven of them were short. And um, this brand new Kirkland, yeah, I'm, I'm not overly impressed with that. Uh, the couple of times where I put this, I was wrong, it's not a 2018 Pro V1, it's a 2019 Pro V1. You can see it's second hand, there's markings on it and there's there's a line on it, and you know I don't draw lines on my balls. But that, whenever I put that into play, after I'd hit that stupid Kirkland, it outperformed it every time. Now I'd read that Kirklands do spin a lot and they do balloon, and that was certainly the case on the shorter clubs. I've hit the three wood a few times today and I nutted that Kirkland with the three wood. Um, so I don't know. Let's, let's just say that the jury is still out. What did I actually shoot, would you believe? Well, I went out in a 3 over 39. No, I didn't. I went out in a 3 over 37, and I came back in a 3 over 39, and they give me five shots from the yellow. So despite all my problems, I managed to score. And despite all those pitches being poor, I managed to score. I suppose it helps. I think, I, did I hold about, I hold three good length putts and I had two relatively tapping birdies. Both fortunate. On the second there, I hit my second shot a little left and it bounced into the green and rolled up to, what was it? Three, three and a half feet. And that last one out of the rough, uh, I took an awful lot of grass before the ball. It managed to carry the bunker and because there was no spin on it, it, it managed to dribble up to the hole for, for a tap-in, basically. 
Um, now, one last little point about golf balls. I let a two ball through because they were catching me up because I'm not walking very fast with this knee. Got to go back to the quack and get some more antibiotics because I don't think that infection has quite gone yet. So I went and did a bit of ball ratting in the bushes. I found one really good Pro V1 that went in the bag and I found four Callaways. So the question for you, and there can only be one answer to this, either Callaway golf balls are rubbish and don't go straight, or people who play Callaways are rubbish golfers. It's got to be one or the other, hasn't it? I'll let you decide which is the correct answer. But um, for the moment, I'm more than happy playing a um, five-year-old Pro V1 that I found in the bushes rather than a brand new Kirkland. Cheerio.